Welcome to Puff Daddy Reef. Today in the Red Sea Reefer tank, we've made a shocking discovery. So I've been having some problems with this tank. I lost some fish. I did a lot of water changes. I tested the tank all over. All the parameters looked really good. Everything looked almost perfect. Um, and then one thing came to mind. I kept feeling like every time I touched the tank, like I was getting shocked. And at first I wondered, Maybe it's just um, like I had cut my fingernails a little short and I would feel it right under my fingernails. I'm like, maybe my fingernails are just cut short and it's just the, the salt water stinging. Um, but then I, you know, stuck my fingers in my other tank. It didn't feel like that. And every time I put it in, I would feel a little shock. And it would seem like, you know, sometimes the shock would be stronger than other times. Like I would like touch it and then I get a shock, but then I touch it right after that and it would kind of go away. So it was like there's some sort of charge building up in the tank and disappearing. So I went to a lot of sites and I researched stray voltage in aquariums and there's always some sort of voltage in the aquarium when you have uh, basically these magnetic pumps because you have a magnetic coupling uh, basically that enables the voltage to be carried through the tank. Now typically this isn't a problem for the fish because they're not grounded and this is just a voltage that's kind of emanating from the pumps and it's just there, but it's not dangerous. And you'll see that um, you could have, you know, 20, 40 volts even in a tank with a lot of um, pumps, 40 volts AC, and it might not actually be a problem if it's just this voltage, you know, coupled magnetically through the tank. But what is a problem is when the voltage is actually um, the type that is building up between your tank and the environment and can discharge through you and this is what I was having in this tank so how you can test this is basically you get a standard uh, voltmeter like this and then you have your two plugs you basically have a ground plug and you have another plug and the ground plug you want to ground um, preferably ground it in an outlet um, directly in an outlet in the uh, ground plug part disclaimer I'm not an electrician um, so don't try this or try this at your own risk um, but you can ground it in the ground plug and then you stick this in and you can make readings um, based on AC voltage. So for demonstration purposes here I have this power strip and I'm just going to stick that in there and make sure that um, it is grounded. Now it's usually best to plug it straight into a wall rather than the ground in the power strip but this will actually work you'll get um, pretty reliable readings. And then I'll turn my voltmeter here. Um, I will sit it to on and basically to measure, um, this is DC, I'm gonna measure AC and show you what those readings come out and then I'll show you um, the actual discharge I was detecting through DC. So now I have the voltmeter grounded and now I'm gonna stick this thing in here and it's gonna auto level, it's gonna say I have 21, 21 volts uh, basically in the tank. And so this is voltage um, that's just being kind of um, broadcast through the tank from the pumps. Now this voltage in here, even though you know I'm grounded, I can touch it. It's not going to shock me. You know I'll even touch this. It's not going to shock me at all. Um, so that's because it's not. It's not really you know available to shock you. This is just stuff that's emanating off the pumps, and it's nothing to worry about. So I did an experiment where I went through and I turned off all the different pumps and I kind of looked at the AC voltage for each one to see what the pumps contributed to it. And you could see that all the pumps contributed something to the AC voltage kind of emanating throughout the tank. But that wasn't really causing my problem. I could see that any pump that I had would basically add uh, additional AC voltage to the tank so not a single one was a culprit because they were all basically doing the same thing. You'd turn the pump on and there'd be more AC voltage. So I had to come up with a different method. So just for an example here, you saw with all my pumps on, um, I was basically pulling about uh, 20, pulling, I don't know, pulling's a better term for a current, but I have basically about 20, 21 volts, okay? Um, as long as I'm grounded. So. 21 volts with all my pumps on. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn off my gyre and we're gonna see what that looks like. So I got my Apex controller right here and I just use this little tablet to control it. So I turned off the gyre. 
And now I'm gonna stick this in here and we're gonna see, well, with the dryer off, we're still at 20.2 volts AC. So it doesn't seem like the dryer actually had uh, much effect on the voltage in this tank. I don't know if it's due to just the design of the dryer. So how about let's turn off the return. So now I've turned off the return pump and that's one of the biggest pumps in this tank. And so with the return pump off, we're down to 18.6 volts. Sorry, that's my auto top off. I'm gonna also turn that off. So with the return off, we're pulling about uh, 4.22 volts. So the return is contributing a lot. Now I also have my skimmer on, and right now the tank's still kind of connected because there's still water in the feedback loop. But let me, I'm gonna put this down below and leave this up here and kind of see what it is in the tank with the skimmer. Yeah, it's 4.2 in the tank with the skimmer. So that's the only pump left on. Let's turn that pump off. All right, so now let's turn the skimmer pump off and see what the AC voltage is. So with the skimmer turned off, the AC voltage in the tank drops down to 1.5 volts. So basically, you know, the skimmer is adding maybe three volts to it. The return pump looks like it's adding, you know, another 20, and then maybe the gyre's adding some voltage as well, but not nearly as much. So every single pump I have is contributing some AC voltage. Now what I don't have turned on here is the pump that was actually shocking me. So let's turn that on. And how I actually figured this out, because everything that I would turn off would basically decrease the AC voltage. So I couldn't use this measurement to isolate what pump was actually um, causing the stray voltage. So what I did in order to isolate it was I just kept turning off pumps and sticking in my fingers and getting shocked. And if I still got shocked, it mean the offending pump was still on. And I basically did that shocking myself until I turned off the reactor pump and I no longer got shocked. So let's turn on the reactor pump. This is the one that's bad. And we're just going to see what happens on this, um, this dial. So right now I have 1.4 volts AC, and a lot of that is just emanating from the lights, um, kind of an electromagnetic coupling from around here. All right. Reactor. We're going to turn this thing on. Okay, so the reactor's on, and this reading immediately went up to 8 volts AC. Now that's typically not a problem because everything does contribute something to this AC voltage. But what's really crazy is when I switch it to DC with this pump on, you see this behavior where, actually I'm not seeing this behavior. It looks like it might have stopped. I was, when I had it on in DC, I would see this behavior where the voltage, right now it's like at 150 millivolts, which is, it's kind of normal, um, but I would see it spike up to like one or two volts and then drain and go down. So there was like this DC surge and that would kind of correlate with me shocking myself. So in this case, I isolated it just by getting shocked, which might not be the safest thing to do, um, but I actually could see a behavior, there we go, it just did it, um, where the it would shock the voltmeter, cause a spike in DC voltage and then it would go down just like when it was shocking me. So for this type of failure for my pump, DC voltage was actually helpful, but the most helpful was just sticking in my finger. So we'll see if it does it again. Um, or let me touch the tank and, and let's see if I get zapped. Welcome to Puff Daddy Reef Product Minute. This is gonna be a section in my videos where I review products I love. I will also have a link to a blog post on my website about the product as well as a place, uh, a link where you can directly purchase it. So the product today that I really love is the Flipper. This is a algae scraper that is probably one of the best ones that I've found in my time in the hobby. Uh, what do you think, Chief Product Officer? Yeah, he doesn't really have an opinion on it, but I really like it. Um, basically, it has this scraping blade for scraping algae off the tank. And then on the other side, it's got like a fuzzy pad um, that you can use to basically do some more wider type of scrubbing. 
I personally never use the scrubbing pad, but I still think this is a great product anyway, and I'll let you know why. The first is that it's neutrally buoyant, so when you're going around corners, um, if you do lose track of it, it just kind of floats there and you can hold the magnet and it attracts it back. The second reason is this blade actually works really well um, when you're buying it for the recommended tank sizes. Um, it's got enough force, it scrapes really well, but it's also not a sharp blade like a razor blade. So you're not gonna just cut yourself um, and so it works really well. You can also replace these blades when they get dull. Um, generally though, I haven't had to do that very often, if ever. Um, other things about this, I think it's just a well put together product. Um, I also have the Flipper Nano. That one seems underpowered if you're at a quarter inch glass or above, so just for really small nano tanks, I'd go with the Nano. Otherwise, I'd go with the Flipper, but at the quarter inch is kind of a weird place where it's a little too powerful, which means it's kind of hard to push um, on those real, you know, on those quarter inch, like borderline nano tanks, um, but the nano one is maybe a little weak. But for most normal tanks, you're talking your 40 gallons, your 50 gallons, um, a medium size works good. This one works fine for this big tank, even though under the specifications I should be getting the large. So I'll probably do that um, later when I get more co Coraline that I need to scrape, but this is, this is even working fine um, on the thick glass that I have. Now a product that I really hate is this uh, Tunzi scraper. And basically this scraper has um, these little blades here and I have actually, to demonstrate the problem, I've already lost one of the blades. Do you have it? Sorry. He's got it. Um, so the blades, anything, anything he'll have. So um, the blades basically attach to it like this. So the only thing that touches the tank are blades, which is a really, um, you know, great concept because you're not gonna get sand or anything between it. It's just gonna be 100% scraping. But the problem is when you go around corners, these blades just pop off and they fall to the bottom of the tank and you're left with a useless stick. And then this stick is rubbing against your tank and then the other one pops off and then it gets sucked up in the pump. You have to find it. Maybe this whole thing falls off and this thing's weighted like lead rock, sinks to the bottom. On top of it, this part here that you're supposed to push across the glass, um, it's kind of shaped like a pencil, so you're doing something that might take some elbow grease and you're kind of relegated to just a couple fingers to push it. It's ergonomically a bad design, so if you can, uh, get the flipper. But if you still want the Tunzi, I will have the link to that in the description below and you can buy it to uh, see for yourself. So that's it for this product minute. Hope you enjoyed it. Let's get back to our shocking discovery. All right, now I'm going to touch the water. Make sure the pump's on. Okay, the pump's on. I'm gonna take the, touch the water and see if I get shocked. Um, it's not too bad of a shock, but I figure I might as well show you what it's like. Oh, ooh, ooh, yeah. Yeah, it does startle you. It's not very painful, but like most shocks, you know, are 90% startle. So, so that pump is zapping um, right now. And that's why I'm gonna take it out, get rid of it, but that's how I isolated it. So let's do it again, just for, just for kicks and giggles. Yeah, so you know, like a lot of people have like nine volt batteries, you know, it's like, <sighs> it's hard to describe. It's kind of a, it's a, it's a real sharp feeling, but um, not, not something that I want my fish to have. And an interesting thing is even though the pump was down in my sump, I would actually stick my finger in and I would get shocked up here. And this loop isn't even really connected, but I can feel it really lightly, not as strong down there, but really lightly up here. Now when I add my, my return pump back on, of course, then we've completed basically the circuit. Everything's connected by essentially a wire of salt water. And that, 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 will, uh, that will shock you. So that is how I determined how I had stray wire in my tank. Um, basically using the the AC method really didn't tell me anything because the magnetic coupling um, in this case wasn't shocking me. Um, it was basically kind of a DC voltage just discharge. Um, so the DC setting really told me it, but the easiest way to tell if you have um, dangerously high stray voltage in your tank, once again, don't ever, ever recommend this. I'm not an expert. Don't take my advice at your own risk, but touching your tank and getting shock, shocked will definitely tell you uh, that you have stray voltage. And it's, 
it doesn't really it shows up right when you touch the water so right when you touch the water you'll see there's a little there's a little discharge it goes high and then it goes down to kind of a standard standard voltage so anyway that is all I have to say about stray voltage in the fish tank don't get too worried about stray AC voltage because it's really not stray it's just kind of being conducted around the salt water but DC voltage discharging through you when you touch the tank that's definitely something you need to take care of right away so we're gonna take that pump out and get rid of it if you have any questions on getting electrocuted in fish tanks please leave them in the comment section below I can attest that it's not the most comfortable thing in the world always keep your floors clean and dry keep your outlets high and have ground fault interrupt plugs if possible so that's it for this episode of puff daddy reef if you like the shocking discovery i made today smash that like button hit that subscribe ring that bell and i'll catch you next time on puff daddy reef